and we're back. Uh, this time we have Darren Berry with us to show us the other side of the Casey Donahue stage and all of his fancy stuff that I probably won't understand, but hopefully he's going to explain it to me. Uh, how are you, Darren? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, it's a little uh, warm out here and it's getting windy and we're about to blow away. I see things blowing away in the background, but uh, well, let's start with your pedal board and uh, you go ahead and explain it however you like. You just take us through this uh, thing. Well, first, I've got the Shure QLX D, I think, 4 wireless, which it's way too expensive to be on a pedal board. And I don't say that for any other reason, but when you travel as much and you're all these different places like where we play, I had to have something pretty, pretty high quality so that we could change channels and, and be able to not to be handicapped by, oh, somebody's using this frequency and so on and so forth. So I... Something good enough to rise above all the shit that's floating around everywhere you go. Yes, simply put, yeah. And those antennas are very impressive, I must say. Uh, so go ahead. Huge. Uh, and that's a, that's a big quality to have, a great quality to have in a wireless big antennas. Uh, secondly, right out of that into the SP compressor, exotic. Um, and here's a point I want to make, and I'll make this point through several of my pedals. I made a, a Facebook post not long ago. If your manufacturer gives you the opportunity to do 18 volt, do it. Your pedal will react and it will respond like it was designed to do. Like there's a reason why they give you 18 volt opportunities. The exotic compressor, the exotic SL drive, the booster, all those are from exotic. And they give you the 18 volt option, although they'll work at 9 volt, they sound three times better. It just sounds like a different pedal nearly when you it, give them 18 volt. Is it in any way akin to uh, turning up a tube amp? Uh, I would say so. I think it's also akin to maybe putting regular unleaded in a car and then premium unleaded. Uh, it's still gonna run, but you might get uh, better performance out of your vehicle by doing so. Well, you are, uh, believe it or not, the first person I've heard say that, so I'm very interested in that already, so go ahead. Okay, so out of that, then into the Southland. Greer amps, I love the pedals. Uh, Athens, Georgia, he does a great job on pedals. I've got two of them on my board. Uh, the Southland, the light speed. The light speed is so versatile, I think I could have four of those and uh, be happy with different settings on my board. It's a great pedal. He does a great job, all hand-wired. Um, they look like a little preamp inside if you go in there and look at them. Uh, Wampler Euphoria, great pedal. Um, I use it for sort of a middle-of-the-road gain. The Southland it sounds so amp-like when I, when I have it on. Sometimes I'll have to look down at the light to see if it's on because it doesn't really sound like it affects the amp at all. It just kind of meshes with it, melds with it, and... It's like suddenly you're thinking, boy, my amp sounds really good right now. It's just got a little bit of a voice to it that when it's on, and the gain is all the way down. Level is all, well, not all the way up, but 3 o'clock. Uh, but it has a voice that um, it adds to... And we'll get to the amps in a minute, but adds to the, the girth of the amp. Oh, can I say girth? I, I wish, yeah, no, I, girth. I want you to say girth repeatedly. <laughs> so, yeah, and then out of the Southland, Euphoria, Lightspeed, then the Plimsoll. I went in the Tone Shop there in Dallas the other day, which is a great shop, by the way. I get paid nothing for that. Uh, yet. Yet. The Plimsoll, I was sitting there and I'm going through pedals and I was bound and determined to buy something this day. And I couldn't find anything I liked. And Mike Doty says, here, try the Plimsoll. I was like, uh, all right. He's a good guy. I thought I'd give it a shot. I plugged it in at 9 volt. We're going back to this whole scenario again. I didn't like it. I'll be honest. I, I was just like, uh, it sounds like a thousand other pedals. He says, oh, I'm so stupid. The guy that told me to tell you to try to play this said do it in 18 volt. He brought me a one spot voltage doubler. I don't get paid for that either. But one spot, I got three of these on my board. It, it doubles the voltage, so it goes from 9 to 18. And it, uh, it just makes all the difference in the world. I love this pedal. As soon as I got that 18 volt thing, 
I bought it. There it is. It sets on my pedal board, and I use it every night for some of the newer stuff. Uh, Kiss me, the, the single, um, and uh, some other songs. But it's a great sounding pedal. It's a two-stage pedal. You can turn it down for soft clipping. It has a uh, it's a little bitty tiny knob over there that says uh, stage two. You turn it all the way up, you get more of a hard clipping, a little more uh, more grind out of it, I guess. More like distortion Absolutely. than overdrive. Absolutely, more distortion than overdrive. And is there is there one of these that you use sort of as the go-to for more songs than any other during the night, or are you going tap dancing between these things? The three there, the first three, the Southland Euphoria and the uh, Lightspeed, those are... If I had to do a fly date and I had to grab a couple pedals, um, it would probably be the Southland and the Euphoria. One of the Southland, I mean, one of the Greer and the Euphoria, just depending on what I was feeling like. And what's going on with your uh, Stompbox modeler up here? Okay, well, I'll, I'll hit the SL drive because that's like a, a super lead in a box. And again, 18 volt. I bought this pedal actually off of John and uh, I was looking for something in a distortion, like a heavier thing. We got back home in Texas and, and even some of the newer stuff. I felt like I needed a little more. And uh, and that one actually provides me that big kind of rich distortion that you get. And uh, again, 18 volt, I didn't like it at nine volt. And uh, when I hit it with 18 volt, it sounds like a different pedal. Out of that into the modeler. Now it does a thousand different things. Uh, I only use it for modulation and ambient effects like tremolo. Well, actually, tremolo is the only modulation effect that I use, and then everything else is reverb or slapback delay, long delay, just different varying delays. And it's got a tuner built in. I use the tuner as well. It mutes everything, so it works out really well for me. Okay, awesome. A lot of times, you know, once again, things like that, they look like you know a starship uh, here but they're really not there's not a whole lot going on really it's not really complicated yeah. um, you hit a button and it shows up over here on the screen and everything's in real time you can turn it and when you make adjustments now there's settings inside it where you can manually save it or it will automatically save it I've got a set where it automatically saves it so on the fly if I want to do something different and I like it it automatically saves it. So when I go to another patch, I go back to it, it's there. Well, I like the sound of that. That's pretty badass. Pretty handy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And so from this, we go into your amp setup here. So let's yeah. take a look here. Center right over here. Yep. I, again, I, I like what I see. This is, when we get a little old school, that starts to speak my language. So go ahead. Well, I like tube amps. And on the road, sometimes um, tube amps are. A little bit finicky and everything, but the basement just seems to be built like a tank. They really do. That's absolutely correct. And uh, there's a reason why they're still around after all these years. This one here on the bottom is a 68. This one here on top is a 72, and they both sound clean. Every night, just, just power, and they're pretty basic volume treble bass. So when you're running pedals into that, you're not having to fight. What essentially is preamp pedals in front of a preamp, you're not having to kind of fight that, that battle between this preamp and those. And so volume, treble bass. And you can see both amps pretty similar in the settings. Yeah, and everything, all the, everything seems to be set real low. Like I don't see anything past four on there, so to speak. It's a 50 watt, both of them are 50 watt heads. So once you get past, gosh, once you get past three on uh, the volume, they get pretty loud. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now on uh, just for people's uh, edification, uh, they liked that I said the word edification in the last video. So word. yeah, um, well, we like big girthy things in this video, obviously. Uh, big girthy word. It is. Do you find that um, on amps like these, uh, if you turn, let's say, for example, if you turn the EQ settings up, like the treble particularly, or the bass as well, do you, it, does, it, uh, does the volume also increase? You know what I mean? Some amps are like that. So like, I'm curious as maybe that's why you have them down so low like that as well as the volume, or you just prefer them at the setting, like just the way it sounds. I don't think the volume increases overall. Of course, when you turn the treble up, you're turning whatever frequency that might be or whatever range of frequency that might be you're turning the volume up on that frequency so it's going to seem louder mm -hmm. 
especially with treble you know that can really cut through a mix and sometimes it's just it's obnoxious so I think it sounds best right here uh, I also think and I don't know how scientific this is but because there's no mid control I think that it has a natural built-in mid and I find that if you get higher than three four five six then you start to really scoop the mids so let's say that everything is on zero and your natural mid is on zero as well and again this is not scientific it's just the way it seems to me so I've got mid at zero bass boosted a little bit and treble boosted a little bit if you want to look at it like that so with just the two knobs then that's how I don't just completely do away or scoop the hell out of the mids so we got three and three just a boost on both sides of the mids if you will and then the volume um, like I say at, at two two and a half three it's it's a pretty uh, yeah, as loud as hell. So, yeah, it's a pretty substantial amount of volume on stage into the J Design 112 cab. I've got a warehouse uh, speaker in there, and and right now I've drawn a blank as to which one it is, but it's um, it's a warehouse speaker, and your man's going around back, so maybe we can uh, figure this out later. But uh, yeah, and, and with the amps, I don't have them both going at the same time one to show one to go if if something was to break down and uh they're both set the same way so uh j design can you get that anywhere or did you have to go somewhere they, is that a specific uh, area that you can find that or where did you get that he has an online presence i've never seen him in a store anywhere i actually bought this off of a of a friend that i have back in arkansas and uh because it fit the space and uh, it's not aesthetically correct and john was pointing that out just a minute ago i appreciate that uh, but uh, yeah, it's a great cab. It's uh, I think it's all tongue and groove. Like he does a really good job building the cabs, and uh, I really like the warehouse speaker. And as soon as we get done with this, I'll remember the name of the, the speaker that it is. Uh, you know, uh, no offense to John, but uh, I have always been uh, of the mindset that I don't give a shit what it looks like if I think it sounds awesome. <laughs> well, that's that's exactly what I'm rolling with right here. Is is uh, form over. Uh, function over form I guess mm -hmm. right yep. yeah and then just the uh, good old voltage regulator up there on top and uh, night in and night out you can see that voltage change and and of course your tube amp will change as well it'll get gainy and sometimes a little noisy if uh, we played somewhere the other night and I had like 112 volts I was like oh gosh so yeah and it uh, looks like a pretty run-of-the-mill Sennheiser right dead in the center is that right 609 uh, I guess that's the sweet spot. That would be uh, somebody else's call right there. But yeah, Sennheiser 609 microphone. And uh, right down the middle. yeah, right down the middle. Okay, sweet. Uh, well, now we'll move on and take a look at your guitars. Alrighty, uh, well, let's see what you got for guitars here. Go ahead and show us. Well, the first one I play here is basic standard American Telecaster with a really cool strap that uh, my boss has got me for Christmas, which. It's pretty cool. And uh, basic, this is just a uh, stock American-made telly. Right here that I got. Casey, actually. No pickup adjustments, no nothing? Nope. Everything is stock on this guitar. Now, this is the one that I, I have just started playing predominantly. Um, the one that I had been playing is a guitar that I probably bought this guitar more so because it was from Charlie's Guitar Shop in Dallas. And it had been customized. It's got the four-way uh, switch, Lawler Specialty, and the bridge, which I absolutely love. I do as well. I recommend it. Um, I, when I found out about this, I bought two of them. Just, and I don't even have it in another guitar. Just the other one sitting in the closet at home. And then just a, a basic Tele neck pickup, which blends really well with the Lawler. Um, and this is a Mexican-made guitar, but I walked in to Charlie's and I had been looking for a telly and they had several things there but just the way they had this guitar set up and uh, and it sounded so great I was just like well let's just go with that also another little customized strap that a buddy of mine back in Arkansas made for me D-E-B spells Deb I'm not sure how masculine that is but anyway I like my strap so that's a beautiful strap, yeah. Deb. And then I've got an acoustic. It's a Schecter acoustic that I play that I don't guess it's out of a case yet, but uh, 
we do a couple acoustic songs in the set and uh it's a great little guitar that was very simple yeah see sometimes it doesn't take much here you know it doesn't you had stock guitars one of them was mexican made it wasn't even an american uh, but if you put killer pickups in it and it's set up right then it's friggin awesome uh, absolutely and lawler just does a great job i have lawler and fraylin i have several guitars that i don't have on the road but that seems to be my go-to when it comes to aftermarket pickups and and nothing against fender pickups like i said this guitar over here sounds great um but the Lawler, they do something special down there, and so does Lindy Fraylin, so. I 100% wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, they're great pickups. So if you're in the market for something aftermarket for your Strat, Tele, whatever, whatever you're playing, they do a great job. I can endorse them, and I don't get paid for that either. There's a lot of things I don't get paid for. Yeah, no one is making a cent uh, from this or on this video whatsoever. Uh, all right, well, thanks a lot, Darren. I appreciate it, man. Hey, man. Thank you. Before we go, uh, the most important things, uh, they're going to tell us what their favorite craft beers are. First, let's start with that. Or just craft beers you like. You don't, not, don't have to be on the spot what's your favorite, but we were just trying to figure out something. Which was it? I'm a Miller Lite guy. I'm sorry, I know that's not craft. Hey, hey, hey. Moving on. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just love it. It's hard, to, uh, it's hard to get away from it. I will drink any cold, free beer. How about that? Okay, well maybe I can I'm open-minded. Yeah. If I can be persuaded off of the Miller Lite, right. come at me. But uh, I do like Miller Lite. Okay, John, do you like craft beer? Yes, my okay. favorite is probably scotch. Or, I see what you did. I like rye and bourbon too. Very good craft beer. Well, this is a tough crowd. Okay, so uh, then uh, next is what I'm really most interested in. I don't even care if you guys like Christmas songs or not. Just tell me what your favorite Christmas songs are. I tell you what, my little girl is two years old, and she, we watch The Grinch year round. So you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. I don't even know the name of it. That is what it's called, and I also watch it year round. That is a fantastic song. It's got a lot of rhymes. Yes, it does. The original life. Uh, an incredible bass singer named Thurl Ravenscroft. Wow. Who, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Thurl. All right. Thurl Ravenscroft. Ravenscroft. All right. Who is, unfortunately, passed away. Beautiful man, beautiful singer. And John, hands down, hundred percent. Oh, holy not, Mariah Carey. It's the greatest. Oh my God. Perform and, and my wife and I, we, we get in a fight every year because she thinks that Christina Aguilera's version is better. And we go through it. Last year, I'll probably listen to Oh Holy Night two hundred times. Last Christmas, over and over again. And he made all of us listen. I to made it everybody on the bus listen. If you heard the high notes at the end, it's just unbelievable. Isn't it? It's the greatest vocal performance of all time. So uh, we're right gonna pop some Miller Raven. lights, and we're gonna listen to Mariah Carey. Old it's night. the best. Uh, Still listen to it. Florist Country Store. Uh, hey, thanks a lot, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.